today I'm uh, for official visit to, uh, I'm here for official visit to the European Commission and uh, certainly it's a very nice occasion for us to remember great European and of course your great husband amazing human being really f that inspired all of us for generations for eight for decades Wilfred Martins I, it's hard to believe that he's no longer around Basically, he was the last mocking kind of great generation of world <coughs> politicians. And he was the last one, not only living among them, but the last one active among them, which is amazing, because he outlived basically all of these great leaders, and he basically was active till the last minute of his life. And that's, that's very remarkable. Uh, his contribution to European history and to uh, the world history, indeed, because it was passed on the European history, will cannot be overestimated because that generation, his generation, with his active participation <laughs> leadership, changed the world as we know, knew it. We grew up in a free world, and thanks to him and other great, great leaders like Reagan or some others that of that of Margaret Thatcher, um, the world became what it is now. Much better, much with much, much bigger opportunities. But the amazing thing was that he stayed till then and nobody else felt this need, acute need for freedom and acute need for novelty. He's always looking for something new, of new challenges. And he was amazed in with young people. I know that because uh, some of our my friends uh, came to Brussels in the 90s, for the first time ever to Europe, and he was the one first to welcome any young politician, to embrace them, to open their ways, to give them advice. He, I thought he, he was permanently young. He was all the time at this basic attitude. So, you know, we really dearly miss it. And I saw, we, of course, we were at this funeral in Sasvang Head, but I have to tell you that there were lots of speeches pronounced, but I think it, the feeling goes beyond speeches. It's, um, uh, it's much more profound that we went out and it's really some big historic moment ended there with his, with his passing away. In any case, we loved him. I mean, he also loved us, as you know, and uh, he loved every person that he thought would bring something new to this world, to the better. And uh, so I would like to give you George's highest decoration. This is St. George Medal as uh, our great gratitude for to, his, to this great figure, Belgium, so to Europe's sister, but also for my country. To you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thanks. Mr. President, I'm very honored uh, to take this medal in the name of my husband. You know when he came back from Georgia, he was always so optimistic about not only the future of Georgia, but especially about what you realized. Because his experience was that it was you who entered Georgia in a new democratic area with new technologies. Even, for example, the policy reform that you did, he found that it was better in Georgia than in Belgium. And he spoke a lot about Georgia. It's a pity for me that I never could go with him to Georgia because a lot of times he asked me to go with him. But you know, he never thought that he would die so early. Even uh, the last months of his life, when he still worked, he thought that there was a future for him. And I thought the same. Uh, so that's maybe the reason that it was impossible to go together to Georgia. But I thank you. It's a big honor for me. Uh, to, to obtain this medal with the colors uh, of your country. And I will never forget the fact that he had such a great love uh, for Georgia. He spoke about you, he spoke about your wife. I met your wife in the Marseille Congress, in one of the working groups uh, that she, she gave an introduction in one of the working groups. And she was so enthusiastic about your country. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you.